Welcome back to White Sox Weekly here at SoxFest 2016. I'm Connor McKnight here on WLS AM 890. Sitting down with, uh, I don't know, you tell me if it's if it's okay to say it, Tyler. Uh, White Sox shortstop, White Sox third baseman. Um, how, how do you want to be addressed this coming season? Shortstop, for shortstop? sure. Shortstop? Yeah. All right, no, uh, fair enough. That's what we're going kind of what I figured. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the position's out there for you, and the, and the battle's there, and I know a lot of people have expectations that you that you take the reins and, and take this thing together yeah just uh, I mean shortstop's my natural position so it's uh, exciting to get a chance to go back out there and then obviously in this stage of things looking forward to it uh, we were talking a little bit before the uh, or during the break rather about uh, this offseason for you and how it's been so much different than, than last offseason I mean coming back from a Tommy John this last offseason and now this year you get to lift weights and not go crazy <laughs> yeah it's been been good having a chance to actually um, feel normal again, you know, not being stuck in a, in a uh, you know, doing physical therapy and actually get to work out and do everything like normal, feel normal, progress through an off season as you'd want to going into spring and uh, this, this time around it's good to be able to do it that way. What, uh, what was learning third base like for you this last season, you know, knowing that you had a chance to come up, make a roster, you know, make a case to stay there and yet you had to do it a position that was at least somewhat unfamiliar to you. I mean, what, what was your comfort level with third base when you came in, and what was it like playing it, you know, at a big league level? Uh, it, the transition was, it wasn't so much a new position, it was the minor leagues to the major leagues. Sure. So, I mean, up here everything's faster. The guys, the guys you know, they square the ball up a lot more consistently. Uh, so being over at third, it was just a matter of, um, you know, kind of getting a feel for how fast and everything, uh, everything plays out, and um, just getting ready for just just being able to make the adjustment of being ready pitch to pitch for big league hitters. Who helped you most on the defensive side, making that uh, that kind of adjustment? I work with Super Joe with Joe McEwing. Sure, uh, we'd be out there every day, and we have been in the past. You know, every year, spring instructs whatever it is, and then uh, I mean, during spring, we'll, or pretty much. The whole career, it's been working at every spot, second, short, third, just to, you know, so if the time, you know, can, just like how it played out, right. be ready for it so it's not like brand new. And um, with Ever Magianas, he's our infield coordinator in the minor leagues. We work on it every day. So, it, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a huge change. It was just a matter of getting used to how fast the ball get to you over there. Sitting down with White Sox shortstop Tyler Saladino here on WLS AM 890. I um, want to ask you this too. You've got uh, almost a whole new infield kind of putting together. Even if it's, even if you take you into account, you know, moving over from third to short and being there full time. Uh, what's conversation been like with Todd and with Brett? How do you figure that pans out? And for you being the shortstop there, what's the, uh, what's the first, you know, most important thing that you guys, you know, want to get set on the infield? Uh, well, I haven't had a chance to talk to Brett yet. I haven't met him just um, when we played against him uh, last season. But uh, talking with Todd, and um, I mean, the biggest thing just it's just getting to know each other right now. You know, finding out what what uh, what the guys like, and and a little bit, just a little bit of um, you know what their expectations are. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just going to be a matter of creating a bond, getting a relationship on the left side of the field, or up the middle with Brett. Right. Um, all the way around, really, the whole field. Uh, defensively, it's just making sure everybody, everybody's on the same page. You know. What uh, you know when you when you make that double play combination when you put it together, they don't they don't all all the time work. You know what I mean? I mean it takes time and patience and, and familiarity. I would imagine are the three things. I mean, you fill me in. You've actually played the damn position. What does it take to, to form a, a double play combo? And what do you what do you and Brett need to work on? Um, I mean, is it, is it a sense of communication? Is it knowing where that other guy's going to be? Is it, uh, is it just reps? Yeah, reps, for sure. It's a lot of everything. Uh, just to, the reps help. Uh, obviously, you'll become more familiar with the other person. Uh, but it's, it's a matter of uh, just, you know, kind of knowing how, how they play. How, you know, getting familiar with how he, how he feels, how he feeds it, how he turns it, all that kind of stuff. Right. Knowing, knowing where he's comfortable, um, you know, on, on feeds from my end of it or all that kind of stuff, just just creating that bond, getting that relationship going, and that way everything just flows, becomes natural. What, uh, how was the, I mean, other than being able to, you know, lift weights and pound it out in the gym, that kind of thing, did you get up to anything, you know, fun, interesting? I mean, did you, 
you know, I know last offseason you had to kill some time, but this year you got to probably go and do stuff that you want to do as opposed to sit around and do rehab for five and a half hours a day. Yeah, um, fishing's been pretty good back home. Yeah? Yeah. What do you fish for? Uh, I like tuna fishing. So you're out deep in the ocean and stuff? Typically. It's El Nino right now, though, so they're close. They're, uh, it brings the, El Nino brings the tuna in? Yeah. See, you, you don't learn this anywhere else, but White Sox Weekly. Uh, <laughs> El Nino brings the tuna in. So that's, I mean, I imagine that's cheaper gas, it's a better trip, you get to bring more people out there with you, right? I mean, that, that all kind of factors in. More fish, that's all that matters. That's all that matters? Yeah. So deep sea tuna fishing, I mean, is that, I've, I've seen it on television, I've seen kind of the, uh, the, the romanticized version of it. Does it get the heart racing as much as, um, you know, playing ball or anything like that? Oh, yeah. It does. God, yeah. I'm looking at your feet. You're not kidding. You love this stuff. Yeah. So uh, what's the, the biggest fish you brought in? Uh, keep the record? As far as tuna? Yeah. Uh, my biggest is like, I think it was like 45 pound yellowfin. Nothing, nothing huge. Not like what you see on TV. I mean, but 45 pounds though, that's, I mean, that's a big fish to have to haul in. I mean, can you get that in? This may be a dumb question. Can you get that in on your own, or is that like a whole rig? Yeah, no, that's easy. It's, I mean, okay, it's, it'll put up a good fight, but it's nothing like the 200 pounders. That's you, like a. Two, I mean, have you seen a 200 pounder caught? Uh, not personally. I mean, I've seen it, but not caught. Are you are you like watching YouTube videos of like 200 pound tunas and, and bringing them in? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Watch every one just, of them. Just to know exactly what it would be like when that thing hits the line. Yeah, yeah, you try to live that moment with him. Well, I would imagine that you've got to be you've got to be all locked in on that one, right? I mean, like the, the harness, you, it's like a Jaws situation where you got to clip in and be in the boat and everything, or be in the in the seat and everything. Yeah, it's like it's like hooking onto a uh, to like a truck driving down the road. I mean, full speed. That's insanity. Yeah, you got to hold on. Well, what got you into that? Um, I grew up fishing. I mean, San Diego, right on the water. Okay, so this is just a thing. Yeah. I mean, do you have a do you have a crew that you go out with? Yeah. Do you have a crew? No, I don't have a crew. Oh, not, like a, not like a crew. Not like a crew on the boat. Like, do you have a, some friends that, that do this with you? That kind of deal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Got, yeah. got all the fishing buddies. I mean, like you were hiring a first mate or something like that. <laughs> I was, like, you've got friends you go out there and do it with. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. I mean, it's, it's nice of you to be able to get back to that after a, a season of rehab and, and getting out there and being healthy. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was nice. Tyler, appreciate you stopping by, my man. We'll see you in spring training. Um, I know the expectations are, are there for this ball club. I mean, just real quickly before I let you go, I, I know you've got new guys in the infield to get a hold of. I asked Chris Sale the same question. Feel good about where this team is heading into, uh, heading into Phoenix? Yeah, definitely. Every, every year is exciting going into it. Um, and then it's, it's, it's a new group of guys. Um, it usually is every year. But, um, yeah, it's this point in time, this is where, where everything starts getting to go and you, everybody's getting ready. So it's exciting. We're all ready to go. Hope you guys are. I think they are. I think they are. Appreciate you stopping by, my friend. Absolutely. Tyler Saladino, Thank White Sox shortstop, hanging out with us here on uh, White Sox Weekly on WLS AM 890.